Hey guys, wanted to make a video showing uh, something me and my wife did in our living room. Um, I want to start off right off the bat by saying I'm not an electrician, um, but our local code for our city does allow the homeowner to do some electrical stuff on their own. And this is something that falls under that category. This is something that I'm able to do without an electrical license. Um, I'd say if you have issues with electricity or you've never worked on it, have someone help you that has, or call an actual professional. Um, that way you're safe and everybody that's involved is safe. Um, so basically I want to show you what we're, gonna, what we're gonna do here basically in our other room. is something we've already done once in our house. Um, we had a um, one light fixture in this room and it was very dim. Uh, in the evenings you couldn't really see much. So what we've done here basically is taken the one light fixture and turned it into basically five. So it distributes the light better around our living room. Um, it, looks neat um, as far as we're concerned it matches some of the some of the other things we've done in our house that have been more of an industrial look so what we've done here is just basically taken an existing light fixture and we put an electrical box on the outside of it and moved it all to the X the, the outside of the wall instead of the inside of the ceiling and then we basically just set individual external electrical boxes around the room and just ran our wire in the conduit between them and made a giant light fixture for the most part that just mounted to the ceiling. Um, we have five bulbs in here. Um, we did do LED bulbs so the draw on the circuit is not any more than it used to be with the single fixture. It's actually less than we had before so that's better. And we did put on a dimmer since we do have more light now. We didn't want it to be too much light and so now we can actually dim it down to almost no light at all. And then um, when, they're, when they're at full brightness it's very bright in here in the evening. So um, we're going to do that in our living room as well, or I'm sorry, in our dining room as well. And I'll kind of show you over here. We have a single light fixture here, and then we have a single light fixture over here as well. Um, they don't put out very much light at all, and we use this room quite a bit. So what we're gonna do, I think, is gonna try to tee off of these uh, individual fixtures with either one or, uh, I'm sorry, two or three bulbs. We're not sure yet what we're gonna do. Um, but I'm just going to kind of walk you through how we did it over here. It's going to be the same way we're doing it here. And uh, basically, once you have that down, the designs, the, the possibilities are endless, basically. You can kind of run this stuff wherever you want to on the outside of the ceiling. Um, and it does kind of look neat, and it is an industrial look. So, And there's multiple fixtures you can use to mount to them as well. Um, we're going to stick with the kind we had in here, um, just so it's uniform through the house. So uh, we'll get started. Okay, just want to talk a little bit about the materials I'm using. Um, starting off with the light picture. It is, it's from Menards. Um, I don't know if they sell them at Lowe's or not, but it's just Patriot Lighting. And it's just a, a vapor tight light. And just kind of has an industrial look we're going for. Just real simple. And I think they run about $14 a piece. The wiring I'm using is just 14 gauge stranded wire. Um, I used Romex on our last project. It was kind of difficult to work with, so this should be more than sufficient. Um, plenty heavy for what I'm doing. And I just got a roll of black and white. Um, our house does not have a ground wire. It's an older house, so I'm not gonna be running a ground wire. I'm just gonna ground the actual fixture itself to the box. And the box extension this is just basically an extension for a for an existing box. Um, this looks about like what you're gonna have in your ceiling already. Um, may not be metal for sure, but it'll look like this with a without a cutout in it. And this will mount to the ceiling like so. I'll have a hole for my existing wires to come down through, and then your fixture mounts to that like this. And then also you're gonna need some wire nuts, obviously. Some half inch conduit is what I'm using. And then you're gonna need some set screw connectors for your actual conduit to connect to your box. And these are very simple to use as well. They just have a, a nut on the back of them. You knock these holes out, whichever way you're gonna run your conduit. And then you put the threaded side through, put your nut on the back, tighten it down. Oops. Tighten that down, and then your conduit slides into the actual end of your set screw connector, 
and you tighten down this Phillips head screw and it just holds the conduit in place basically. So it just keeps everything secure to your box so you don't have wires showing anything getting pulled apart by accident. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to start getting some breakers shut off here and then we'll get to it. Okay, I'm going to remove this light fixture. Um, as you can tell, we need to do a little more painting apparently. The ceiling is not done. Um, but this light fixture is pretty simple to remove. Um, it just has a nut on the bottom here that holds the globe on. I'm um, doing this with one hand, so it's going to be a little tricky. May lose the nut here. Okay, the nut's off. The globe should just drop down now. And you can see uh, just a normal light fixture. Okay, sorry, I have to go back and forth here to get tools. Um, gonna remove this LED bulb we had in here before. And as you can see, there's a couple of screws there that hold it to the ceiling. Looks like at one point with the old bulbs, it got pretty hot in here at one time. So I'm gonna take these two screws out here, and then I'll bring some more video back in. You can in see here. there's a little bit of a ring around where the fixture used to sit. I may end up taking a little drywall compound and just kind of smoothing that out a little bit or just painting over it, I don't know. Um, if you'll be able to see it too bad from the floor. Um, you can see though, however, um, the box is a little loose. I'm probably gonna go ahead and put another screw in to the, to the ceiling joist just to get it pulled back up. Make sure it's tight. I've, had, I've seen this a few times in our house. Um, the nails have just worked loose over time. So usually I just put one screw in there and it holds it nice and tight. Um, I'm gonna disconnect these wires, these wire nuts, and uh, I've got a neutral and a hot wire. Um, most time the hot wire is black. Um, for some reason, a few spots in my house I found they use red and white. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get that taken care of. I think it's just because this is on a three-way switch. Um, would make sense to me why it's that way. I'm going to remove these wires and these wire nuts, and I'm going to keep these screws here that the old fixture was mounted with to mount my new box extender to it, um, since I know they fit already. And I'm gonna get that done real quick, and then I'll come back with some video here. And I, I, again, I apologize for the stopping and starting video. Um, just kinda hard going up and down the ladder and holding the phone at the same time. So. Okay, so now that I have the fixture and everything off and the box secured, um, I went ahead and put a screw up in there. It's kind of hard to see into the box. So now it's nice and tight. It's not moving around. Um, only problem I have with it is I have a little bit of space around my box where the drywall is not up to the box, which is pretty normal uh, since it is roughed in when they do the electrical um, or the drywall, I'm sorry. So what I'm gonna do is um, make, a, make a little ring to go around, around that to kind of hide that, you know, hide that rough area around it. Otherwise, I would just put my extension ring. You can see the, the holes here and here. They just line up with these holes and you mount that to the ceiling like so. But as you can see, that's gonna show a little bit, so I don't want that. Um, it'll be easier on my next ones when I move them out further because they're just gonna be these on the ceiling by themselves, so there'll be no hole behind them. And, uh, what I've actually done, and I say I'm gonna make, I already made the ring um, between videos here. Um, what I've done here is taken a piece of aluminum sheeting and from the hardware store, it's real cheap, it was like five bucks for a sheet of it. And I just uh, cut out this ring and it's gonna basically fit behind my box. Like so, on the ceiling and kind of cover that extra little area around the box that's roughed in and I am gonna make a video when I make the next one and I'll have that in the description below so you can click that link and see how I made this um, like I said if your if your box wasn't quite as rough as mine you can get away without it I'd go that route but this took me probably I don't know maybe about 15 minutes to make it so um, not bad at all and it looks it matches the look also so I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna get it mounted up here real quick and then I will continue the video here in a second. Okay, 
I have the plate up there underneath the box and my wires poking down through. Get a little closer here. As you can see, I got my wires running through a couple of grommets so the, the aluminum doesn't cut them. Uh, the aluminum's pretty sharp whenever it's been cut. And uh, since it is thin aluminum, it is sharp in general. Um, got my neutral wire, my hot wire down through here. Um, also have my tabs. I'm starting to pop them out of my box to run my conduit in the direction I'm going. Um, on this one, I haven't popped it all the way out yet. All you do is take a screwdriver and a hammer and you can just knock it in and then you just bend it back and forth till it breaks off, like so. Um, that's a little easier to do when you're on the ground, so you might keep that in mind. Um, it worked out okay for me here. And now what we're gonna do is put our conduit set connectors on, and I'm gonna grab one of those here real quick. Okay, so now that I have the holes popped out, I'm just gonna take my set, set connector, and gonna stick the thread it in through the hole, like so. I always try to keep my set screw on the side or the bottom, uh, otherwise it's kind of hard to tighten it up later, obviously, so. Um, and then this nut just goes in the back of it like so. And again, I'm trying to do this with one hand, so it's gonna be difficult um, for me to show you how to do that, but all you do is just basically tighten it down um, like you would any other nut on a bolt and then it'll be set. And you can use a pair of pliers to tighten it if you need to to get it a little tighter. And then uh, you'll be ready for your conduit. So let me go ahead and get that done and I will bring some video back up. Okay, I've got my measurements on the ceiling where I want them. So seems like I wanna have about 29 inches between my boxes just to kind of center them on the ceiling. So um, the easiest way to do it is just to, to cut your conduit as these boxes are these extenders, they're three and a half inches wide. So inch and three quarter from center to edge. Um, so basically I just kind of get my, where I want the center of each of my boxes and then I just subtract my uh, inch and three quarters from each side to get my number. Um, that put me at 25 and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my conduit at that length. Um, I'm just using a basic tubing cutter. You can get in your plumbing supply area at your hardware store. Um, you can also just use a hacksaw if you'd like to, if you don't want to invest in one of these. Um, this just makes a lot cleaner cut. Um, it's a lot less messy, and it kind of leaves the end uh, free of the burrs you might get from using a hacksaw. But like I said, uh, you can get just as good a result with the hacksaw. Just make sure um, once you do cut it with a hacksaw, kind of clean out the inside of the, in of the end of the pipe. Um, this inside of the pipe can get pretty jagged once you've cut it with a hacksaw. Um, the tubing cutter makes a lot smoother cut and it also has the deburring tool on the end of it to kind of get rid of those jacket edges. So um, I'm going to cut this real quick and then I will try to get it fit into my box and we'll pick up from there. Okay, I have my two boxes already hooked up here with my conduit and my connectors and they're ready to go. So I'm going to basically, these are going to be my two T's that go out to each side of my center box. This is going to tie into the box that I have up there already. And I'm gonna mount these to the ceiling where I want them, and then I will pull the wire last. Um, it's pretty easy to pull the wire through the conduit once it's up there, so it's not a big issue at all. Um, and we'll get to that here in a okay, second. Okay, I have my conduit hooked into my center box, my power supply box. And you can see I got uh, my wire sticking down here. And then I just have my conduit run into my outside boxes that are just mounted to the drywall or this is actually into a stud. Um, I have um, a screw going into the stud right here and it's very secure, it won't move. And you can see my box is setting here. My uh, joist run this direction. So I have a joist on the side of my box so I knew there was a joist here. Um, and then I could kind of see some of the old drywall nail divots too so it made it pretty easy to find the stud. Um, I just kind of ran my screw at an angle. Um, kind of you know this direction into the stud to hold it and got a nice deep grab on both of those screws um, looks really good right now so from here on out what we're gonna do is basically just run um, wire from the center box out to these boxes I'm gonna use that 14 gauge stranded wire that I had in there and we're gonna run to both sides and then I'm like I said I'm gonna ground to my actual boxes so um, I'm going to go and do that as well 
and I will kind of give you some tips here on the on the wiring too. Okay, now that I got my wires in, um, you can see I pulled them through side to side. Uh, if you want to get a shot of that, um, I got a little bit hanging out. I've stripped about a half inch off each end, and so I've got them coming in here to my main box where my existing power is, and I'm going to just take my my two white wires that I've got going both directions. I'm going to tie them to my existing white neutral wire. Oh, hold on. And when you are tying your stranded wire to your solid solid wire, it's a good idea to lead with your stranded wire just a little bit, just kind of let it stick down a little bit further than your than your solid wire. And then wire nut that together. Okay. And I'm going to do the same with my hot wire, my black wire, so I'm going to tie them all together and then I'll, once that's done, I'll have power to both of my ends. Just want to get a little closer video up here of leading with the stranded wire. You can see my copper wire, my solid copper. I just lead with my stranded just a little bit before I put the nut on. Um, I have seen saw that from an electrician a while ago. Um, he just always said that was a good idea, so I try to do that when I'm doing stranded wire. So I'm going to go ahead and tie this together and then we'll start with the lights and also if you have um, if you do have a ground wire coming out of the ceiling um, you would also have your third ground wire running to each uh, each end so you could go ahead and do that here too um, like I said I don't have that wire so I'm gonna be grounding to my box okay, got my wires tied together and I've got my uh, ground wire grounded to my box um, I just use a self-tapping machine screw and you can see it's mounted, it's uh, grounded to the box there. And I've got my wires for my fixture tied together. And now I'm just going to basically use the screws that came with the, uh, with the box that were already attached to it to get the fixture mounted up. Um, I did take the cage off of the fixture. Um, it's kind of a pain in the butt to put it up with the cage on it so that comes off. And so I'm gonna get that done here and then I'll get some more videos. Got them both wired up. Um, I don't know, and optionally, I didn't mention this earlier, but you could technically put another light right here if you wanted three. We're gonna try two for now. I'm worried that three is gonna to be too much. So we're gonna go that route for now. I'm just gonna put a cover plate over that box. Um, I, have, I don't have that with me right now, but I did have another bulb here I wanted to try. Um, my wife went to the store to get some bulbs. I don't have any right now, so I'm going to just test what I have here and go over to the light switch and it is working fine. Um, I'll test the other one here in a second make sure it's working okay but I don't see any reason it shouldn't be. And uh, these these uh, fixtures are pretty nice. They have, like I said, they have the cage. I don't know if I'm going to put the glass on them or not but the cage goes over the bulb. Um, gives it kind of a neat look. And also optionally, um, you can also get, they do make another bulb, this is, or the fixture, this is what we use in our living room. It's actually uh, just a vapor type light, and it already has the box and everything that comes with it, so you don't have to purchase that separately. They also have a little bit larger footprint um, to mount to the ceiling, so if you are covering an existing box, it does make it a little easier. You don't have to make the, the ring like I did. Um, the only issue was I had to drill a couple holes in the top to make it mount because they don't match up to the boxes. Um, that's kind of why I went with the extension this time. Um, it worked it worked pretty well, but um, like I said, you could you could go either way. Um, like I said, these are Patriot lighting from Menards. I think they're fourteen fifteen dollars, and I believe these were around thirteen dollars at uh, Sutherland's Lumber here in our hometown and uh, I think you can get them about anywhere so they work pretty well. Um, I'm gonna get this buttoned up and try to get an after video here and uh, try to get this I'm thing I'm just finished. gonna wrap this video up real quick actually just showing the stuff in our living room that's already complete since the, we're to that step basically where we're just putting the covers back on the fixtures. Um, these are on a dimmer so we can dim these down for a movie. Uh, if we're just sitting in here some nights it's kind of nice just having a little bit of just a little bit of light um, and then we can bring them back up to full brightness if we have company over or just trying to do homework or read on the on the couch. 
Um, we did do also uh, something similar to this on our front porch. We had an existing fixture uh, right here and uh, you can kind of tell around it the old light fixture had gotten the vinyl hot and kind of warped it. Um, but we just put a box over it and then ran them out and teed them off so that we could have light along our whole front porch instead of just over the uh, entrance to the door. And if you can tell, um, it spreads out pretty nicely. Uh, we have light covering the whole porch now and uh, we just like the look of it also. I know this look may not be for everybody, um, the exposed conduit, we really like it and I'm sure in five or ten years I'm sure we'll change our mind and want to do something different but um, that's the fun part, getting to do something else. So uh, and there's minimal impact to the, you know, to the ceiling and stuff in the house because you can just always put a little drywall mud over the, the screw holes and then do something different. Um, so if this video uh, helped you guys out and you liked it, please like and subscribe. I um, also have a video here, um, got, got my kids toys all over it of course, but have a video on my page of doing the cable railing on our porch. Um, had an easier and cheap way to do that also, um, if you'd like to watch that. And uh, other than that, I think I'm going to get going and try to get this other fixture fi finished up. And uh, thank you.